Hello, hello everyone. Yes, what do I have here? I have some chicken. Now, I know Stefano asked me, how do I clean these? Uh, this is an older, um, yeah, I'm going to start off explaining. Uh, if I see like some that are a little dried up compared to those nice fresh ones, let me see if I can show you a nice fresh one here. And by the way, I keep all my mushrooms in paper. Even the ones you buy at the store. You know the ones that you get at the store sometimes? It's like that styrofoam package uh, with the plastic wrap. Not a good thing for mushrooms. Not a good thing for mushrooms. Your mushrooms are going to spoil really, really, really fast. It's better to wrap them in paper. But if you get a lot of mushrooms like we do, um, which is, number one, very good for you. There's a lot of minerals. There's a lot of vitamins in mushrooms. There's also a lot of medicinal properties in mushrooms. So mushrooms is something that you should try and put in your diet. Uh, it's an extra bonus for everybody. So I say put mushrooms in your diet. So let me explain why I wrap them in paper. Number one, um, they stay longer. If you buy a lot of mushrooms, they stay longer in the refrigerator. And if they do dry up a little bit, just a little bit of water, I'll bring those back in. Or you could just throw them in a stir fry uh, or in stews or whatever. So I do dry some mushrooms. I also freeze some mushrooms and I also jar some mushrooms, which I'd like to show you. But there was a couple of mushrooms that were that grew first such as this one and not the prettiest as you could tell these these are chicken of the woods that taste like chicken believe it or not if you've never tried it if you've never tried it and you manage to get your hands on some you'll be surprised how delicious these are it actually tastes like chicken now not sure how you people are going to like the idea that it tastes like kind of freaked us out the first time we the first one the first time we tried these mushrooms but there's no blood in these and the taste is better than chicken that's what i say it's better than chicken because the chicken yeah i can't handle meat anymore after 12 years of being vegan it really really i don't like it so anyhow um really really good mushroom that's what i'm going to tell you now, I am going to get a cutting board and just show you. Um, so, Stefano asked me, how do you clean these? Well, first, all, uh, first of all, these can actually be cleaned in water and it doesn't affect the mushroom. Like, if you're going to buy oyster mushrooms at the store and you're going to dump them in water, they're going to get very soggy on you. Uh, some mushrooms you don't want to use, uh, put, not only the ones at the store, even the ones you pick. Some of them really don't want water because it is going to... Fill your pan with water. I mean, you can still cook the water out of it if you want to do that. But the best way to cook certain mushrooms is just by using a small brush. I'll show you what I use. Being that I'm an artist, I have a lot of these brushes on hand. And I use this one here is for the kitchen. It's a cheap one that I picked up at the dollar store. And um, cheap package. And I took the biggest one there and that's what I use. If I'm cleaning mushrooms now say these are beautiful and they don't need to be put in water because these ones are a little older I will simply take a brush and just brush off whatever debris is on it and remember a little b12 is not going to kill anybody these actually grow on wood they don't grow on the floor unless there's a piece of wood uh, if you check my last video, you're going to see there's one on the floor. That's because there was a piece of that oak tree on the floor where the mushroom grew on. But otherwise, they don't grow on the floor. They pretty much grow on trees. Now, if you're going to see a piece like this, that's basically a piece of wood. So all you have to do, or bark, all you have to do is take it off and give it a good shake. Now, I will simply just throw this in now, or I can start cutting it and throw it in the water. Now, that's what I do with chicken of the woods. Also, um, like I said, these are a little dry, so I'm going to hydrate them a little because they're not super, super dry. They're still flexible and movable. Uh, always take a look because... 
for some reason there's these little beetles that love to live oh here we go they love to live in between the layers so always check for those little guys and just take them outside don't kill them everybody wants to live so anyhow you can kind of pull them apart with your hands and if you look at the way this mushroom is it's very fibrous like you would if you're pulling chicken apart and just throw them into water and you could give them a good wash that way like I said this is a mushroom that you can do that too because it's a very hearty mushroom and because it's not super dry I'm able to fry these up without a problem so that's how I clean chicken of the woods now some of these are really notice the tips a little aged but again I can still make food with this because it's not that old now if it's very very dry I clean it very well and I'll make chicken broth with it that's another thing that I do so you can just simply break these apart and just throw them in water and then you can fry these up but yes if you get a chance do go out and look for these mushrooms they are just simply simply delicious I know you can actually uh, when they're fresh and I'm gonna show you the difference let me just put this aside this one was one of the mushrooms that I took because I didn't want to leave it behind I feel that I am able to do so much with it either make soup with it I'm just gonna put that there and push this over I could either make uh, by the way the best chicken broth oh my god you actually think you're why is he crying where is he this makes the best chicken broth if it's fresh I try not to make chicken broth with it unless Erica's really really craving it uh, but when I get a piece that is not the nicest looking mushroom because it's a little dry on the ends um, or a little too dry I give it a good clean and then it becomes a stock mushroom but the chicken broth that comes out of this mushroom you would swear when I tell you you would swear you're having fresh chicken broth that your mom used to make that's how good this mushroom is uh, you're not gonna find these at stores if anything you might find it um, at a market if there's a forager there yes you're gonna pay a lot of money for this if you haven't had a chance to come across this mushroom you really do not know what you're missing it is like crazy delicious and again these are very easy to find it's a mushroom that um, you can't miss it put it that way if you see it on the tree you're gonna know this is chicken of the woods and I'll show you now a fresher one because I will be cooking up some of this because my daughter wants me to make her okay now she wants me to make her chicken salad and that's what I'm gonna do with this mushroom now here's a fresher one you can see everything's fresher about this they come even fresher I if you've seen some of my videos some of them are just perfect but here's one that's a little fresher and this is what the ins uh, the underneath looks like it's yellow it's a polypore if you touch it, it's almost like rubber underneath and the top is orangey with the little tips some of them are a little thicker uh, some of these mushrooms are paler but they're always yellow underneath and some of them are very thick almost this thick but you can't miss them they grow like shelf like if you look at my videos you'll see exactly what I mean uh, they almost look like flowers growing on a piece of wood and they're always yellow underneath and orange on top and if you smell them they have a beautiful mushroom smell but these are the softer ones these now if I didn't want to throw them in water because they're nice and fresh I will simply take a brush brush off any debris on it which would be either just a little bit of the uh, what do you call it of the wood that it grew on sometimes you get a little bit of the bark that grows right into the mushroom so all you have to do is just simply 
pick that off and then I will simply throw this in a pan but again uh, they're so fresh that you can you don't have to put them in water these ones here but again if you want to you can simply break them up and you can throw them in water because it really doesn't make um, that much a difference I sometimes add water to the pan when I'm cooking these because they're so fibrous so it's okay to go into the water so there you go you just cut them up in whatever size or you could rip them by hand and then we're gonna cook these up with whatever herb I want to cook them with but yeah they're very very easy to spot in the woods guaranteed they're easy to spot and they're easy to cook all you need is a little bit of oil a little bit of garlic uh, if you like that rosemary like that chicken and rosemary flavor then you could add uh, maybe rosemary to it and if you like that fresh thyme if you have fresh thyme in the garden you can also um, add thyme if you don't want rosemary but a little bit of garlic some salt some black pepper and you have one of the best mushrooms you will ever taste I know some of you are going to say, like, where am I going to go to find this? Um, this type of mushroom will not grow on conifer trees, which will be the pine family. They will grow on a mixed, if you go in mixed woods, where you're going to find uh, oaks and elm. Um, did I say oaks? I did, eh? Where you find oak oak trees elm trees maple trees that's where you're going to find this type of mushroom and you're always going to find it on um, a tree that has fallen down or a tree standing up but mostly on fallen trees i found it mostly on fallen trees trees that have fallen down and have been on the ground for a while so that's where you're going to find these uh, mushrooms. But remember, just because you don't spot them one year doesn't mean that you're not going to go check the year after because sometimes it takes a while for them to, to actually show up. And there is. And you're going to see it makes like yellow water. So I try not to keep it in the water. I'm talking to you now. But I try not to keep it in the water too long because I don't want to lose all the taste. But yeah, you could quickly give them a wash and then put them somewhere where you're going to strain them. And if I'm making like a chicken broth, first I give them a fast, fast wash. And if it's an older mushroom, I let them soak in water after I've washed them. And I dump even the water, once they're washed, I dump even the water that they were soaking in, into the chicken broth. And it makes that beautiful yellow chicken soup broth. It is simply amazing. See how the water's going a little yellow? If I would have kept that in there longer, it would be yellow like chicken broth. It is crazy. Really something else. It is and a lot of you are saying, well, why are you making a video on this one? You know I can't get that mushroom. But I'm sure there's lots of people that do go picking chicken of the woods. And if you are a mushroom hunter, I'm going to give you some ideas what to do with this mushroom. And for any one of you that is new to mushroom hunting or want to go out, you have ideas on how to prepare and how to cook this mushroom that's okay that's not a problem there so just take off whatever it's not very nice and just check it well because when it's an older mushroom you might have a little buggy in there so you don't want to have any of those and always check those crevices This one's really, you know what, I'm going to use the fresher one and leave this one because she wants, my daughter wants to have chicken salad. I know, I'm all over the place with this, uh, with this uh, 
video. So here we go. We're going to just cut the fresher one for her. Now, like I said, you could either simply brush it if they're very, very fresh. Just brush off whatever debris, cut off whatever piece of wood is still attached to your mushroom. And don't be so picky on how to cut it because you really don't need to be precise when you're cutting this. Let me just push this over. You don't have to be so precise when you're cutting this mushroom. They're very beautiful. Beautiful to look at. And when I tell you something else to eat, this is a mushroom that will just make you say, wow. The first time we had this, we were like speechless. So always check crevices because you might always have that little guy who wants to live in between. Let me see if there's anything in there. There's these little beetles that just love to live in between the crevices of the mushroom. Because they grow like fans. You see there's something dark in there. I'm not sure if it's a beetle. But I'm going to try very carefully to open it up. And see what's in there. And if it is. Usually the refrigerator puts them to sleep a little. I'm just going to cut these off. Trying to see what's in there. Trying to get in there without hurting whoever is in there. Sometimes it could just be a piece of wood. And sometimes it's a beetle. And sure enough, there he is. He's a little beetle that's living right in there. He's going to wake up as he gets warmer. There he is. See him? And I'm going to bring him outside so he could go do his little thing. So I'll be right back. So guys, if you don't like bugs, don't get squeamish. They're really innocent little beetles that just love to find a home in between, in between the crevices of these mushrooms. So, do I have a jar? Erica, would you go get me a jar of uh, these mushrooms just to show them how beautiful they are? So I'm going to show you also, uh, maybe my next video, I think they're downstairs, sweetie. I'm going to show you how I jar them. And this is how my mom used to do it. And that's how I still do it. Uh, remember, I have an extra refrigerator downstairs, so I have room to put these jars. I don't leave them on the shelf. I put them straight into the refrigerator. And when we need them, we pull them out. You could either toss them in pasta or you can simply, simply open up the jar and put some in between sandwiches. So it's a good way to preserve them if you have the place to put them. Thank you, Erica. So here they are. These are cooked and they've been preserved under oil. So very simple to make. Basically you're going to cook your mushrooms, cook them well, and this one here there's rosemary and garlic, salt and black pepper. And then they go into a jar and you're going to top it up with oil. You want to make sure that the oil goes through every layer of the mushroom. And then when you want to have some mushrooms over the winter you could just open one of these up, put some in between bread, or you can simply um, Take some out and toss them in with pasta. So very delicious, very delicious. 
here we go we're just gonna wash these up like I said they don't have to be washed when they're fresh and they're beautiful because there's really not that much dirt on them if you find them when they're nice and fresh they're dirt free uh, you might find a little beetle here and there because they like to like I said they like to live in between the crevices of the mushroom so that's one thing you might have to look out for but they're very yeah I just want to make sure I don't have any buggies yeah if you see a little black spot just take it out now I use the whole mushroom a lot of people will just take the top part and leave out the butt but I love the butt too especially if it's fresh and then again if it's not fresh I told you I usually use the mushroom just for um, I use it just for chicken stock and we don't eat the mushroom itself we just use um, we'll just use the uh, the mushroom for the stock There we go. When it's fresh, I don't mind using the the base of the mushroom. And I've used this in stir fries. So good. You can use it in many ways. You can use Basically, this is the type of mushroom that you can use as a replacement for meat. You would actually think you're eating meat when you're eating this mushroom. It is that amazing. So it is a great vegan alternative if you can find some. And remember, guys, the best way to find these is to take a walk in the woods and uh, see what you could find. This year, the chicken was good for everyone. My daughter is part of a mushroom group and everybody that went into the woods has found chicken. Just check it when you're cutting it that there's nothing in there that you don't want to cook up. I'm just going to let this one soak a little longer because they're not as fresh as that one. Those are good. And yes, remember mushrooms should be wrapped in paper, guys. Never plastic because you really will destroy your mushroom. There we go. That's scrap. Okay. So while this soaks, Actually, I should put more in, eh? So, let me... I wish this was a live video. Maybe I should do a live video one of these days so you guys can ask me questions. I'll have Erica help me with the video. And she can answer or tell me what you guys are saying and I can answer you. Maybe we'll do that next time. What do you say? You think we should make some live videos? I think so. Hmm? Now, you see how much drier this one is? This is really dry, this one here. So, I am going to use, still cook it, but I'm going to let it soak longer. Some of them are so dry, you really, like I said, all you're going to do is wash them, bag them, freeze them, and mark on the bag. Before you freeze them, just mark on the bag that is for chicken broth. That's how I do it. These ones here, I'm going to let them soak longer see this one's pretty fresh just the tips aren't very nice but that's okay they're gonna get nice and hydrated and you seldom find bugs in this type of mushroom you're gonna find it if it's very old once they're very dry the bugs have come out of it you won't find any mushrooms in those dry dry ones uh, sorry, you won't find any bugs in those super dry ones. 
but if they're drying up you might find some buggies if it's a very old old mushroom old but still pliable like this one so you do want to keep an eye on it but once you soak this up it's going to get nice and soft by the way this is a very medicinal Erica can you give me some info on this mushroom very medicinal and good for you it has a lot of health benefits uh, a lot of Asian um, uh, natural medicine use this for medicinal purposes it's good for a lot of things by the way this mushroom that's good First, I'm going to give it a fast wash. Remember what I said, because I don't want to lose too much of the yellow. And then I am simply going to um, put it in fresh water to finish soaking. So I don't waste anything. If I find chicken, if he's fresh, I take him. And if he's... Um, this this type of dryness I take it anyhow and I'm still able to make food with it the benefits of chicken medicinal properties antimicrobial antimicrobial okay so I'm not going to talk I'm going to make Erica great source of antioxidants uh, inhibit cancer cells I had a page that explained all the medicinal properties, but this is very, very highly medicinal mushroom that's very good for us. So just by looking at this, you know how once it's hydrated, how shreddable it is. It looks just like chicken meat. I think I have a video where I'm cooking this mushroom, and you can see how it actually looks like pieces of chicken meat. These are my drier ones, but I don't want to. Almost done. I have one more. And then. There we go. But yeah, very easy to clean. Yeah, that's good. So that's it. So I'm going to just rinse this up and add fresh water. I'm just going to go dump this water. I'll be right back. Okay, so this one here I'm going to soak. This was the drier one and the rest I have are all fresh like this one so I won't have to do this procedure to it. But like I said, if you're afraid that the brush is not enough for you, like the little brush just to remove because I don't mind um, if they're very fresh like this. I just take a little brush Take away anything that has maybe a little piece of bark on it. But I just take the brush, clean it up, and then I break my mushrooms and into the frying pan it goes. Because a little bit of B12 doesn't kill anybody. Uh, if you feel you need to wash it, yes, go ahead, wash it. A little bit of water, give it a good rinse, and then pull it out of the water. Put it to drain. And then you're okay again with... Uh, with the mushroom and if you see a little beetle that's in stuck in between those layers just take the little beetle outside he's gonna appreciate that you didn't kill him and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make chicken salad with this one for my daughter but I will also show you how I make this and that's gonna probably be another video but very very delicious I used uh, someone asked me if I found any bullets yes when I go to my mother-in-law's place um, it's all conifer trees there. So we find uh, so many different types. Uh, we find those. We find bolis, the pochinis, different types of bolis. There's all kinds. My daughter's favorite is the yellow foot one. So good. It's pink on top. And the bottom of the stem is 
uh, yellow. Next time I go to the country uh, and we pick some bullets, I'm going to have to show you. Uh, I might even have a video somewhere and I'm going to show you what they look like. But yes, we have plenty, plenty of bullets up there and we find them and pick them. They're so, so good. And we did put some in jars. So we're excited about that. So I'm just going to push this aside and let it do its thing. And uh, yeah, actually we even have, believe it or not, we have lobster mushrooms where we want to make, we want to make a chowder with the lobster mushroom and some of the chicken mushroom. I bet that would be a delicious because if you look at it, it looks almost like crab meat or it looks like a shrimp in the water. But, yeah, I mean, we don't have to have... Uh, mind you, the lobster mushroom, believe it or not, is very fishy. It is crazy delicious. Do we have one to show, Erica? Hold on, I'll show you. I hope this is the lobster. Notice they're all wrapped in... I bring them home and notice how the paper gets a little wet. So yeah, you need to wrap these mushrooms in paper. You don't want to put them in plastic bags because you're going to have a soupy mess. Oh, no. Look what I have here. More chicken. Look how fresh this one is, guys. Look at the amount of well, chicken I have. On the yes, I'm going to have to go back. I thought this was a lobster. I'm going to have to wrap this up. I'll just put this in here. There we go. We have lots and lots. I'm going to have to rewrap this. Here is lobster. I'm going to have to retag this. Look, guys. This is a lobster mushroom. Ah, smells just like a lobster. Now, how do you get how do you get a lobster mushroom? A lobster mushroom, believe it or not, is uh, a fungus that grows on a white rosula, a rosula mushroom, and it encases it. A rosula mushroom, if you... Okay, guys, sorry, my camera died, but I just wanted to show you. I mean, these do have to get washed, but uh, if you smell this, you think you're smelling lobster. Not only does it have the color of lobster, but it smells just like lobster. Now, these do have to get cleaned, unfortunately, when we pick them. We just put them straight into... Um, they grow in sand. Yeah, they grow in sand. So, these have to get washed and they have to be cleaned. There's a lot of cleaning to do with the lobster mushrooms, unfortunately. The ones that we find, anyhow, because they're really right in there. Right into the sand. So, if you don't want to be eating sand, you got to clean it really good. So, we might even wash these in water once they're cut but we will have to just remove some of the stuff that see how it's so crunchy compared to um, the rosula that it used to be and there's nothing rosula about this mushroom anymore it is a whole different beast now but yes that is the lobster mushroom and these are very highly prized mushrooms let me just take that part off because that's a no-no. Yeah. I can save as much as I can. But we do want to make a nice chowder with this mushroom. So when I say it's worth it, it's worth it. So for this mushroom, I will be cleaning it. And then let me just cut that off. Yeah. There we go. I will be cleaning it and then washing it and then make the chowder. That's so beautiful. Aren't they beautiful, guys? Beautiful orange color. And it smells just like fish. So I am going to put this in a cleaner paper for now because I didn't get a chance to do it. You do not want to put any mushrooms in plastic. That will be the death of your mushroom. That's for sure. And I have more in the fridge, so as soon as I get a chance, it's going to be done this week. I might even make a video for you guys. So yeah, we even found coral mushrooms. That's going to be fun. Uh, those are also very good to eat. 
but for now I am going to show you how I'm going to make chicken salad this year is going to be like I said it was the one that was a little uh, drier and I did not leave it there I decided I was going to take it anyhow but as you can see it's sucking up that water and it's just coming back to life again and the one that's a little too dry well I told you those you could just put them in a bag once you've washed them and soaked them you could simply put them in a bag and tag them um, chicken broth and you can use that to make chicken broth with. Okay, I'm just going to lower this. Very simple, guys. You want to be able to uh, put a little bit of good olive oil. We're going to throw in our mushrooms. I'm going to add one garlic to it. Erica, you want to go get some fresh thyme? There we go. We're just going to cut the garlic in roughly. And basically we're just cooking up these mushrooms um, and then we're going to make a chicken salad with it so you really don't have to overdo it I will add some salt thank you a little more would have been better salt to taste guys yes I do Erica yeah there we go and of course some black pepper also to taste very simple you just want to cook these up and then we're going to chop them up and make a beautiful chicken salad and next time I make a dish like this maybe I'll go live where if you guys have any questions you could ask me right on the spot and we can and we can answer them I'm just going to put some time now and then we're going to put the rest when we're seasoning our our chicken salad see those are fine the bottom part is a little too woodsy just pull it off the bottom The other part is fine. So we're just going to cook this up and then we're going to add some fresh thyme, some celery, and make a nice chicken salad. Now, like I said, sometimes I do add some water, it does not affect the mushroom whatsoever. this up and these are so so good I can't even tell you how good these mushrooms are so if you haven't gone into the woods um, or uh, find yourself maybe a group if you're worried to go into the woods by yourself uh, find yourself a group uh, it's worth every penny to learn how to mushroom hunt because you're going to get mushrooms number one that cost an arm and a leg if you want to buy them especially mushrooms like this the only place you're going to find mushrooms like this is at a market from a forager someone who forages mushrooms because you're not going to find mushrooms like this in a store that's for sure So while this is cooking, I am going to cut some celery and get that ready for my salad. There we go. 
we're just going to cut a celery stick really as thin as you can and then here we go we're just going to make thin slivers oh thin you like to get a little bit of celery under your teeth so don't make it too thin So you're going to need more than one celery stick because if you're making a nice chicken salad, you do want to have as much celery as you can in there. I wish I had some dill. Maybe I'll use some pickles instead. And these are fun if you put them either in a hamburger bun or you could just put it in a romaine boat. Smells like chicken, guys. It's like crazy. There we go. So I do have some that I already cooked. I'm going to chop that up. So I just need a bowl. I'm going to put my celery in there. go. I wish I had more space to show you what I'm doing guys. Okay. There we go. We're just going to kind of chop it up a little. Doesn't have to be super, super thin. Maybe I should get a bigger knife. Duh. They got a bigger knife. There we go. And like, I don't know if you can see, just like chicken, crazy. Okay, we're gonna add this in. Start off with half and see if we need more. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put the whole onion. I should move that, eh? I should move this. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys. Here we go. So, I don't have any fresh dill. I'm going to use some pickles. Like I 
You see, my husband's been at it. That's okay. They're there to eat, right? Now, if you have fresh dill, you can use that instead. But because I didn't have any fresh dill, I am going to use some pickles. Just as good. And sometimes, if not better. You know the saying, eh? You always have to use what you have on hand and sometimes it comes out better than if you would normally do it any other way. Okay, so there is what would be my replacement for dill. I'm going to throw some... Oh, I don't want to burn the chicken. I might need a bigger bowl too. There we go, we're going to put some fresh parsley. Remember how much herbs you use is really up to you. Taste your food, if you like it, fine. If not, just keep adding what you like in it. That's the best part about cooking, is creating and making something amazing. Usually if I like it, everybody else likes it. There we go. Very good. Okay. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of Dijon mustard. There we go. A little bit of Dijon. Mayo. for now okay we don't have that many that much mayonnaise so we're going to just use what we have and just add some chicken to it and not make a super big batch you got to make do with what you have right I might put just a little bit of extra pickles or relish since I didn't have Okay, so we're going to cut some more chicken. Imagine making chicken salad with mushrooms. That's exactly what we're doing, guys. And I wish you guys were here to taste this. good can I have a little spoon please Eric mm -hmm. we're gonna add some olive oil more black pepper thank you can I have a lime oh I have some here I just have to make some more mayo. Just a little bit of lime skin if you have lime. If you don't have lime, you can use uh, lemon. A little bit of lime juice. More chicken, obviously.
Yeah, I gotta make more mayo. Oh, it's a big piece of chicken there. Remember, taste your food. Um, if you need more salt, you add more salt. So good. My daughter's eating the chicken faster than I can uh, put it in. So good. Okay, guys. I have to apologize. This camera keeps shutting on me. Okay. Okay. I definitely would need more mayo in this recipe, but for now, it's going to have to do. It still makes a very nice chicken salad. It has enough, enough fat. Mm. Very good. Here you go. Some more lime juice. If you want to add some extra herbs, go ahead. I would definitely put more mayo, but because I have none ready, none on hand, I, um, I'm not adding it to this recipe. But you do want to add extra mayo. To this, uh, to this batch of uh, chicken salad, but definitely put more, um, more mayo. I don't have that much left, and I have no more at home, and I don't have any ready. So it is what it is. But I would definitely add more mayonnaise to this recipe. Okay. More black pepper. Here we go. Erica likes that super fine black pepper. If you want to make it a little spicy, you could add some extra spice to that. That's really up to you. If you want to put some fresh thyme, you could also do that. And make yourself the best chicken salad ever. And all I did was use some chicken of the woods. If you eat this, you would never think you're eating mushroom. So if you haven't had a chance to go out, take a walk in the woods, um, anywhere that's got mixed trees, keep an eye out for those bright yellow mushrooms that are growing on, on trees. You would know by the bottom being yellow, the top being orange. And if you're not sure, do your homework. But if you get a chance or you come across some chicken of the woods, guys, you can make the most delicious chicken salad with some mushrooms that are just delicious. And how's my daughter going to eat this? Here we go. Let me just clean off the top of this romaine. And you can, uh, if you don't want to put it, if you don't want to put this in between bread, you can simply put some in some beautiful romaine leaves. And that could simply be lunch. Here we go. This one's a little broken. I'll put that aside and I'll eat that. Here we go. You could put this in wraps, you could put this in between bread. It really is up to you guys how you're going to serve it. And you've made yourself some beautiful chicken of the woods chicken salad. And you would swear you're eating the real thing. Not that we want to, but... Something to try guys. The texture is there, everything is there. So there you go. Very simple, very delicious. So if you get a chance, go out into the woods and go pick some mushrooms. If you come across some chicken of the woods, bring it home, uh, cook it up, make some chicken salad with it, or just make 
a side of mushrooms it's really up to you however you use it it is one of the best mushrooms that I have ever tasted and the texture is just like eating chicken so if you like that guys there you go make some chicken salad and uh, enjoy it either in bread or maybe in some romaine leaves so there you go hope you like this video and maybe the next one we're gonna do we're gonna try and do it live and I'll see you in my next video guys for more videos like this make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rossum Kitchen give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends